Hello everyone, welcome back to Acoustic Paradiso here on Anderton's TV. I am Ben and I would like to congratulate you on your wise decision to buy your first acoustic guitar. Let me help guide you through some of the things that you might want to look out for in this. Don't forget, if you look down below, after you've clicked like and subscribe of course, you can find chapters and you can find uh, timestamps. So if there's a particular thing that you're looking for in this video, you don't have to sit through it all, although I, you know, you really should. <laughs> just for your own, you know, your own benefit. But you can skip to the part you need, uh, find the information you want down there. We do that in all our videos, so you can always find the bits you need. I'm assuming that you want to spend a little bit of money on a kind of entry level guitar, and you are befuddled by the options and choices that you have available to you through the Anderton's wonderful website. Let me talk to you about the two main types of acoustic guitar first, and then we'll go a bit further into the weeds on the different types. This guitar that I have in my hand here is a steel string guitar. That means it's got metal strings, okay? They're not actually steel, but we won't go into that now. It's got metal strings. It's what most people think of when they say acoustic guitar. You know, if you listen to any kind of you know, rock music, folk music, bluegrass, the chances are the acoustic guitar is probably a steel string guitar on that record. They sound a bit like this. I'm gonna do a little mini play for you. So that is a steel string guitar. This is a kind of mid-size guitar Steel string guitars come in a great kind of variety of shapes and sizes, some of which are more traditional than others. Um, I think we're going to put some pictures up on screen here. So the most popular, I would say, steel string guitar shape is a dreadnought, which is one of your big acoustic guitars. Very popular with kind of every genre of music, really. Great for strumming, nice for single line stuff. That's wonderful. Then we get to the kind of more mid-sized guitars, the kind of OM, which stands for orchestra model, or the treble O size, the grand auditorium, some of those things. Something like this, it's a bit smaller, a bit more comfortable if you're, if you're a bit smaller, because the Dreadnought is a big guitar, so if you have got a smaller frame, you might have a bit of trouble reaching around it to actually play. This is great for kind of finger picking and stuff, so if you want to play the kind of folky stuff. <laughs> play it better than that but uh, it's really nice for that nice and balanced across this across the range and then you can go even smaller to what we call the parlor size guitars now the kind of the travel guitars fall into this kind of bracket too smaller bodies generally a, a kind of shorter neck a little bit sometimes easy to wrap yourself around if you've got a smaller frame but then I will, I really like playing parlors as well they've got a smaller sound less bass you know sometimes that's what you want and it's whatever you feel most comfortable with. Particularly when you're starting out on playing, one of the most important things you can do is find a guitar that is super comfortable for you to hold on your lap, for you to play. You know, you don't want something that's got a massive neck that you can't fit your hand around properly. So make sure that when you're sitting or standing with the guitar, it feels comfortable to wear and to hold, because that is probably the most important thing when you're starting out, all right? So that's covered some steel string things. If you decide you don't want to go for a steel string guitar, the other main option that you'll be given is this, which is a nylon string guitar, which uh, I mentioned before. The nylon string guitar has got nylon strings, so they're plastic strings. That means that there's much less tension in the strings than there are with the steels, so it does make it a bit easier to press down. And that's, you know, that can be nice if you're just starting out. However, the neck is always a bit wider on a nylon string because it has to be to allow the strings to vibrate properly. So there's that trade-off where you, you know, easier to press down, but you might have a bit more trouble stretching for chords and stuff. Let me play you a little bit of nylon string guitar. Um, as I say, traditionally used for classical, but they're also used, you know, Willie Nelson has always played a nylon string, Jerry Reed played nylon string, more modern players like Tim Henson, he's got a nylon string, Nick Mulvey, you know, these, Blake Mills even has started playing a nylon string a lot, who I love. So it can fit into a lot of different genres. It sounds more like this. So it's a softer sound. But 
very good for folky stuff too though. For So there we go, that has, that's our nylon string versus steel string. There's, there are obviously a few more differences. The nylon string has a flat fingerboard rather than a curved one, but don't worry too much about that for now. Just try and find something that is comfortable for you and that you think you're gonna have fun playing because that's really what matters. Let's start looking at a few more of the specifics. The next thing I'm gonna look at and we're gonna talk about is the neck of the guitar. So if you're not sure of what the parts of the guitar are called, it's like, a, it's like a person really. We've got the headstock up here, then we've got the neck, and then we've got the body down at the bottom, okay? So the neck is obviously where you put your fingers down, so that needs to be comfortable. When you pick the guitar up, just run your hand up and down the length of it with your fingers either side of the neck. Make sure the frets aren't sticking out the side. The frets, by the way, if you don't know what they are, are these metal bars that run up and down the neck, the fingerboard of the guitar. And when you press down on the, fit, on the fretboard, the string hits the fret and that's what changes the note. So make sure they're not sticking out either side of the fingerboard and then you can just run your finger. You can play each note individually if you like. And you're just hearing for anything that sounds weird. And it'll be very obvious when you do play something that does sound weird, it'll buzz or it'll make an odd noise or the note won't change. And that's something that if that happens, go and talk to the person in the shop and they'll sort it out for you. An important thing that we're talking about with the neck and with the strings is the action of the strings when you're starting out. What I mean when I say action is the heights that the strings are away from the fretboard, okay? On a guitar, we want an action that is high enough to allow the strings to vibrate freely, but not so high that it makes it really hard work to press down and because that is just, that's no fun for anyone. And the only way you can really test that is by feel. I mean, unless you're gonna get measures out, but we're not gonna do that. So feel it. If there's anywhere where it feels like the string is a really long way away from the fretboard, you can always look down the length of the neck here and you can see whether it's straight or not. And if it's got a bend in it, then again, talk to the shop. If you've got a guitar yourself at home that you're doing this with, that you've bought on Facebook Marketplace or whatever, um, you might wanna go and check out our maintenance video that we did a couple of months back where I spoke about adjusting these kind of things. There's a link to that down below where I cover a lot of this stuff in more detail. But for now, I'm going to assume that you've picked up this guitar, you're happy with the action, you know, you, it's not too high off the fretboard anywhere, you've got no fret sticking out the side, you've looked down the neck, it looks straight and that's all good. So let's carry on now to the body of the guitar. So the body of the guitar is the big box here where all the sound is generated. The parts of the, uh, the guitar, it's fairly easy. This is the top. This is the bit that vibrates because it's got the strings attached to it. Then you've got the sides and the back. That's <laughs> fairly, so, fairly obvious there. The body of the guitar is where we get all our vibrations from. This part here where the strings attach at this end is called the bridge. And this where the strings go across is called the saddle, okay? Now, when we're looking at a guitar to buy, the bridge and, and the saddle do affect the action as well. So that, you know, when we were looking at the action of the strings before, it can be adjusted here, but we're not gonna go into that. Just check that, you know, the bridge is attached all the way round on a second-hand guitar, because I've seen some second-hand instruments where the bridge has started lifting. So check all that. Check that it's all nicely done. There's no splinters or anything. There won't be. The body of an acoustic guitar can be made of all sorts of different types of wood. On the more entry-level end of things, the woods, particularly for the back and sides, tend to be laminated, which, you know, kind of like squished together, high-pressure laminate wood. Absolutely fine. The tops can be solid wood, but whatever wood your guitar is made of, particularly if it's made of kind of solid woods, it's important to think about where you're gonna keep it. And we're quite lucky in this country that we don't have vast fluctuations in kind of temperature and humidity like they do in some places in the world. But still, with an acoustic guitar, try and think about where you're putting it. So don't leave it next to the radiator during winter because it will dry out. And if the wood dries out, there's a chance it could split and crack because it will you know, shrink when, when it dries out. Similarly, if you leave it somewhere very damp, 
then the wood will expand. And when the wood expands, that can lead to problems with the neck shifting and, and all sorts of things like that. So if you can leave it somewhere, you know, you don't have to keep it in a case with a humidifier all the time. Put it out, but you know, keep it up on the wall or something and just keep an eye on it. Make sure it's not getting too dry or too wet. So other things to look for on the body of the guitar. We spoke about the different body sizes and body shapes. If it's a second-hand guitar, again, a used instrument, you might want to check things like the binding, which is where the edges of the guitar here kind of meet, because sometimes that can be a bit flaky, but generally it's not, it's generally okay. So the next decision you need to make is, do you want to go out and play your new guitar live? And if you do, do you want to have a pickup in your guitar? Let me explain what that is. Obviously, an acoustic guitar purely acoustic guitar is an acoustic instrument and that means you can't plug it in so you would have to use something like a microphone which is wonderful in the recording studio but in a live situation a microphone is not always the best option it can lead to some trouble so that means that on a lot of acoustic guitars these days including this one you have the option of a pickup what a pickup will do it allows you to just plug a cable straight into the guitar out to an amplifier or a PA system so you can hear the guitar in a gigging situation. If you want an acoustic guitar pickup, the chances are on an entry level guitar, you'll have something called a piezo pickup. What that means is that underneath the saddle here, which is the piece of plastic or bone where the strings cross in the bridge, there's a little thing called a piezo element and that comes out of there and goes to your preamp. The preamp in this guitar is up on the top. It's a very common place to have it. Preamp means pre-amplifier, and all you're doing is you're taking the tiny little signal from the pickup into the pre-amplifier, you're boosting that signal, and we're able to adjust the equalization and a few other things on here, including on this guitar, and on an increasingly large number of guitars, it's got a built-in tuner, which as a beginner is very, very easy because you might buy a purely acoustic guitar, decide you want to buy a tuner, and that's an extra, you know, 20 quid or something, whereas actually, if you'd go well, I'll spend an extra 50 and get one with a pickup. It might have a tuner built in. The tuner on this one, I have to say, is really good. Uh, I'm gonna press it now, check I'm in tune. And if you've never used a tuner before, it tells you which note you're gonna to tune to. So that's my top string, it's an E. And then the little needle tells you whether you're sh uh, flat or sharp. So there we go. I am now in tune. So I'm gonna just plug in very quickly to this amplifier and show you a couple of things that I would look for on um, a guitar with a pickup. The first thing you need to know is that I would say 99% of acoustic guitar pickups do need batteries. The battery can be, as on this guitar, located in a little compartment underneath. Very often they're inside the guitar somewhere. Occasionally it's top mounted. Occasionally you have an external box with it. Whatever way you need to do it, it doesn't matter as long as your battery has got power. So once you've plugged in, let me turn this amplifier on. This is the, um, the East Coast 25 watt acoustic guitar amp with reverb and chorus. I believe they're available as a bundle deal where you can get the guitar and the amp and, and, and a few other bits, cables and picks and things. Links are below for all that stuff. So I've plugged into here. My equalization on here, which is uh, your bass, middle and treble settings on here. And I've set them all to the middle and I've turned my volume control all the way down. So I'm gonna turn the amplifier up a little bit, play some strings. <laughs> Turn my volume control up. So there we go, that's, that's definitely working. And if I play a few chords. That's working wonderfully. Something that I like to do when I'm checking out new pickup systems on acoustic guitars is see the extent of the control, so you can see how far you've got to go. So if I turn the bass, for instance, all the way down, and then I'm gonna turn it all the way up. That's great, and then leave it in the middle. So the middle, the middle option on here, same deal. And the treble. And that means that you can really tune the guitar sound of the pickup to try and be as close as possible to the acoustic sound. So I think if I turn the middle down a little bit, the bass up a little bit and the treble, I'm just gonna leave where it is. So 
So I actually ended up taking a bit of the treble off there too. There we go, the pickup works nicely. I tend to take a bit of the treble off and put a little bit more bass in on a pickup like this. It tends to sound better to my ears, so if you're looking for a place to start, that could be it. Um, the other thing to mention, because it comes on a lot of pickups, is the phase switch on here. The phase switch is something I'm not gonna go into too much. Basically, if your guitar is feeding back, which is kind of squealing and making bad noises, try pressing the phase switch. It might fix it when you're plugged in. I just wanted to touch on kind of buying new versus used instruments. There are pros and cons to both. Uh, I think I mentioned it before, but with a used instrument, you can sometimes, you know, on paper, be getting more guitar for your money, but you need to be aware that with a used instrument, there's also more potential for kind of some problems that you might want to get sorted out. For instance, you know, w whenever I get a new guitar, I would say most of the time, I then want to get that guitar professionally set up by my tech, which, you know, it's not a huge outlay, but it could be an extra, say, 50 quid for, you know, for strings, and if it needs a little bit of work, or, you know, it might need something doing to just bring it back into line or something. If you get the guitar for a, for a really good price, just be aware, you might want to spend a little bit more money having it fixed up and having new strings and fully sorted out, which might mean it brings you up to the same kind of price as buying a new guitar in the first place. But that is a decision that can really only be made by you. Of course, buying new does mean you get a, a broader choice of you know, colors and finishes and shapes and sizes and stuff. Uh, but you might have your heart set on an obscure old guitar, which is fine. Another thing to think about is resale value, something that people touch on. I've got to be honest, Amongst the guitarists I know, resale value doesn't tend to be much of an issue because everyone ends up just with a massive guitar collection. Uh, <laughs> I know I have, but you know, if you've got something like this, the resale value isn't gonna be huge because it is an entry level guitar and the original purchase price wasn't very, you know, wasn't very much. So it will probably depreciate, but that's okay. It's your first acoustic guitar. I'm hoping that you won't want to sell it anyway because it's your first acoustic guitar and you love it. I know that I've got some guitars that on paper are worth nothing, but I would never ever want to get rid of them because, you know, you form a bond with those instruments when you start playing and that's, that's all good. The only other thing I would say that it's worth thinking about when you are buying a guitar for the first time is accessories. So your guitar may not come with everything that you're gonna want or need when you start your playing. So think about whether you're gonna to need to have a gig bag and a case. Are you gonna be taking it out places or are you just gonna be playing at home? You might wanna get a capo so that you can play a lot more, you know, if you wanna play, play along with songs and stuff, getting a capo is really good because it means that you can use open chord shapes in different places really easily and change keys. You might wanna get some picks, maybe some thumb picks, um, you know, a slide potentially, love it, love a slide. Stand. A stand, yeah, or a guitar hanger for the wall. All of these kind of things, which on their own aren't great big, you know, outlays. But if you, you know, if you do go and buy a gig bag and a lead and a case and a bag of picks and a couple of sets of strings, you know, it's not long before you're spending another hundred pounds on stuff. So weigh that up in your equation, and you know, speak nicely to the people in the in the shop, and they they'll always do their best to help you get what you need um, and hopefully give you a good price on it too. So there we go. The most important thing to do, as I say, when I, as I said at the beginning of this, find a guitar that feels good to you, that makes you happy, that you can look at from across the room and want to go and pick up and play, because that's the most important thing. It has to sound good to you, it has to look good to you, it has to feel good, um, and then you'll have fun with it and before long, you'll have a spare room full of guitars and nowhere to actually put your bed. <laughs> uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe and tune in again soon. There's links down below. There's that other maintenance video I mentioned with kind of extra detail about kind of fixing stuff up. And um, yeah, make sure you tune in again and I'll see you next time.